Hey everyone, my name is Keith Horwood and I'm really excited to show you a project I've been working on for a little while now called Nodal. Now what Nodal is, is a Node.js web server and framework um, that's built with the developer in mind to make it uh, really easy for you to get up a new Node.js server project um, and really introduce you to the Node.js ecosystem uh, as well as modern JavaScript uh, idioms and syntax. Okay, so let's get started. Um, the best way to start is with a practical example. So what we're going to use, we're going to do is create a Twitter clone. We're going to call it InstaTweet. And uh, we're going to create the API for this Twitter clone right now um, <clears throat> using Nodal. So the very first step here uh, is to open up Terminal. Um, and I want to do an install of Nodal, a fresh install. Um, so sudo install it globally. OK, well, that's going. We'll look at the tools we're using. Um, so we're going to be using the Atom text editor here. Uh, we're going to be using Node version 4.2.4 with plenty of good ES6 goodies, arrow functions, lots of fun stuff. And uh, we're going to be integrating with Postgres. Nodal has um, out-of-the-box Postgres integration um, along with migrations, its own object relational manager for query composition. Uh, so you get all of those awesome goodies too. Um, okay, so we'll go back here and we can see that Nodal was installed, so we should have access to the command line tools here. Yep. Um, let's create a new project. Uh, we want to call it InstaTweet API because we're generating an API server. Um, and now we're gonna, going to create the directory structure and install Nodal specifically in this directory. Um, okay, cool. Our directory structure is already there, so we can open up the project folder. Cool, so our installation's done. Uh, Nodal is installed in this folder as well. Um, and now we can go and start the Nodal server. So let's go into our Institute API folder and run Nodal S to start the server. Uh, and that's running on localhost 3000. Great, cool. So welcome to our Nodal project. And let's see what's really generating that there. So we have our entire application structure here. Let's not worry about everything. Let's just focus on one thing at a time. Um, we have our index controller. So uh, very idiomatic here, um, emulating uh, classical inheritance in JavaScript using this class syntax, um, extending from nodal controller. Uh, now you'll see, you'll see us extending from a lot of nodal stuff, um, similar to the design patterns introduced by um, the giants like Rails and, uh, and Django. We have this get method um, for when we do an HTTP get request, and we're saying just render a template um, with some parameters, and lo and behold, it creates us this. Let's see what the template it's grabbing. Um, here's all the HTML. Uh, it supports partials as well, so we have a partial generating all of our head data. Um, and that's cool, but uh, it's not really what we want right now because we're interested in generating an API server. So we need database integration. We need all these really complicated things that uh, in a current choose-your-own-adventure node ecosystem, it's really hard to, to get up and running. Um, so let's do it here with Nodal. Uh, well, the first thing we want for our Twitter implementation, our Insta tweet, is we want a tweet model, right? Um, and our tweet is going to have a user ID. Uh, right now, we're not going to worry about creating users, but one thing at a time. Let's create a tweet that has a user ID, and it has a tweet body, which is going to be a string. Um, now, this uses the command line generators. Uh, we see that um, we've created tweet.js, and we've created a migration. So first things first, uh, ooh, migrations. Um, beautiful, beautiful. Let's look in our migrations folder. Uh, we see that um, the same, very similar syntax to our controller. We see our create tweet is a migration. It's extending from nodal migration. Uh, and then we see up and down migrations already defined here. Um, and we see really, obviously, this.create table um, and this.drop table uh, with all of our columns. OK, awesome. Um, <clears throat> now let's look at tweet.js. Um, we're going to see some familiar patterns emerging here in that uh, our tweet is extending from our nodal model. Awesome. Um, here we use a static method on tweets to uh, set our database um, to being pulled in from DB main. And we have our schema being set uh, from our schema, which will be automatically generated when we run our migrations. Um, so let's actually get this model up and running. Let's do a nodal DB create to create our database. Um, OK, it already exists because I was playing around in here before. Um, we run nodal db prepare, uh, just basically empties out our database and prepares it for migrations. Um, we have the schema migrations table that we want to keep track of. Uh, and then do nodal db migrate to run our migration. Fantastic. Um, just to note, we can do nodal db rollback. 
and um, it will roll back and drop our table. Cool. <clears throat> and we can re-migrate again. So we have both forward and backwards migrations. Um, no problem, no problem. Uh, that's cool, we have our model, but we don't have any way to interface with our model externally from our web server. So let's create a controller. So nodal G controller using a generator. Um, let's namespace it to V1. And we got some, we have some special controller generator options here. Uh, we can say that it's for tweet. Um, and then nodal, the nodal generators are smart enough to know <coughs> it's a controller that's going to be interfacing with a model very frequently. Um, not all controllers have to interface with models if you're just doing a basic um, server generated HTML page. Uh, so now we have this V1 tweets controller. Cool, we can see that there's this very explicit um, import or require of tweet.js. Uh, Nodal.require is just a wrapper around nodes require um, that sets the require root path automatically to your, your nodal directory, your app directory root path. Um, <clears throat> just so you can copy and paste requires around uh, and you don't have to worry about where in the directory tree you currently are. Okay, um, and Nodal also has this pattern of being very explicit with uh, its imports. Um, there's not as much magic here as there is in Rails with everything being like globally available. Uh, you have to be very explicit about what you're going to import um, into what module. You also see that we have this module that exports at the top and we always return one item um, in every module that we're creating here. Okay, so let's look at this tweets controller. We have index, show, create, update, and destroy. Again, um, simple CRUD interface that we're used to from uh, frameworks like Rails. Um, and let's see, let's see how this works. We'll, we'll go into detail here in a second, but let's see if this actually works. We'll run our server. Um, cool, it's listing on port 3000. And uh, let's do a get to this tweets endpoint. Cool. Um, Awesome. Now what was happening when we really hit that tweet endpoint? Uh, the router was actually modified automatically by our generator to import very explicitly importer tweets controller and then very explicitly set a route for it, uh, a regex route. Um, so this is like a waterfall. Uh, so once your HTTP request comes in, it'll go through all the routes until it hits one it matches. Um, so this happened to hit the tweets controller. So, okay, great. So we can get tweets, but we don't have anything in there. Let's do a post to tweets and see if this works. Um, yeah, it works by default, and we see here, um, insert into tweets, took 10 milliseconds, um, we gave it a created at value, and that's it. Okay, that's cool, but we want to create a tweet that actually has some content. So let's create a tweet that says, hey. Oh, sorry. Give it a body that says, hey. Cool, and we see this very familiar um, standard API format, so all of our API endpoints will give the same format of response. Um, so you don't have to worry about whether it's going to be an array or a single object or whatever. All API endpoints will give the same type of response. So we created this object, no problem. Um, we can create hello. We can create hello world. Uh, we can create goodbye world. Um, goodbye friend. And last but not least, let's try hello friend. Okay, that's fantastic. So we know we can create things, cool. Um, but let's say we want to have some restrictions on types of tweets we can create. So we can do tweet.validates. Um, and let's say body. And let's give it um, must be at least five characters. Uh, and give it a little arrow function here for how to run validations. Now this is synchronous validation. Um, so we'll do v and v.length is greater than or equal to 5. Um, okay, so now when we try and create this with hey, we get a validation error and we're being told our server, sorry, our, <laughs> our body must be at least 5 characters long. If we add hey -o to it, uh, we get no problem. Um, so that's how validations work, very, very simple. And let's go look at all of our tweets now uh, and explore that. So we have all these tweets that were created. Um, they, none of them have a user. Um, let's see how we can really query this endpoint on the index. So I still have written barely any code except for that validation. Uh, and I can say that I want body not null. I can send that. Oh, and we got rid of that first tweet because the body was null. Um, I can say body starts with equals he. Oh, but I don't get anything because it's case sensitive. Um, and I get all these tweets that start with he. 
Now, okay, uh, I could do ends with friend. Awesome. I can do a case insensitive ends with, and I can put a capital N in here. It'll do it as well. Um, okay, uh, I can also do like ID. ID is greater than or equal to three. Um, now I can put some limitations on it. I can say I only want to grab two. Um, I can say I want my offset to be two. And then I'm going to grab five and six. Okay, great. So how's this all working? Is this magic <clears throat> or is this something the developer really has fine-grained control over? Um, well, kind of both. <laughs> uh, the developer has a lot of fine-grained control. If we look here, what we're actually sending to our tweets query in our query composition is the query parameters object. So we can actually specify here ID greater than or equal to three. Um, and then we send this again. It doesn't matter what we send here. Um, we're only going to get anything with an ID greater than or equal to three. So the developer actually has very fine grained control over here. Um, if we just want to let the user kind of willy nilly um, interface with this model however they want, we can just send everything that the user sends. Um, <clears throat> but this is built to be able to be interfaced with uh, from the actual um, clients very, very, very easily. Uh, now you'll notice this syntax, this actual ORM syntax with um, filters being like ID, GTE, 7, that sort of thing. Uh, you'll notice this is straight out of um, Django's ORM. Um, bored a lot uh, in terms of design patterns there. Um, I thought it was great and it was useful, so it should be easy to pick up. Okay, um, so we have querying our endpoints and we have creating. Uh, let's see if we can delete a resource. Um, let's see what IDs we have here. Okay, we have an ID 7, so let's give a delete to 7. Okay, the first time we do it, um, we got a success, 200 okay, and we, we got this tweet back. Um, we do it again, and we can't find the tweets because uh, we just deleted it. And if we go to our endpoint again, we see that tweet ID 7 is down there. So we successfully deleted it. We go and look at these queries, go and look back in our queries, and we see a delete from tweets where ID is 7. It took 6 milliseconds. Okay, fantastic. So that's an introduction to Nodal. Um, and really how you can start getting an API server set up. Now, the goal with Nodal and all these generators is to really, um, by automatically generating all this code for you, uh, the goal is to really do a soft introduction to how to write software using Nodal. Um, by showing you all this code, uh, prevents you from having to look up documentation. You can literally just play and modify this on your own and see what works and what doesn't. There is full documentation in line um, in the actual repository. Uh, I'm going to be generating API, full API docs that will be available online within the coming weeks, so stay tuned for that. And um, in the next video that I'll launch, I'll show how to actually do user authentication um, and user login. Uh, tools are already built to really easily be able to do that. I'll give you an example. We can nodal gmodel um, and say user. That's a special flag because we have the special user model. <clears throat> We're actually installing additional packages, including the bcrypt package for um, password validation using both fish encryption. Um, so we can see that our user model is already created and actually has some of its own methods already and its own validations. Um, and we can see the uh, automatic table creation for users. And we can do this for access tokens as well for OAuth, um, but I'll get to that in the next video. Uh, for now, I hope you enjoy Nodal and keep in touch, follow me on Twitter. It's at K-E-I-T-H-W-H-O-R and uh, keep up with the project. I'm, I'm really excited to, to keep this going. So cheers and enjoy Nodal. Thanks, guys.